Hello, welcome to video tutorial number 28. This is our introduction to Jitter, and today we are going to create a matrix. A matrix is the fundamental um, tool that makes Jitter what it is, and what it really is is a block of memory that we assign a name to and then pull up whenever we want to have that array of data. And um, that array of data we often use as a video screen, but it's not necessarily so. Anyway, let's make our first matrix here today, and uh, we'll just type an N. Uh, yes, I'm unlocked. Good. An N, and then type in there J I T dot M A T. There it is, JIT matrix. Click on that, put a space, and then we should name this matrix. Let's name it Frank. Hello, Frank. Um, and then I'm going to just uh, zoom in here so that you can see what I'm see what I'm doing. Um, once you've named it, you have to decide how many planes it's going to have. We're going to start small, just grayscale, and so we're going to say one. But I'd like to remind you that usually a jitter matrix has four planes, alpha, red, green, and blue. Okay, so we're just going to use one today. And then what type of data are we going to use? We are going to use C, H, A, R, which is for character. That means we can have anything from 0 to 255 in any of those. Any pixel can have, um, since we only have one plane, it can only have one number between 0 and 255, and now we just have to decide how many pixels to make our uh, matrix, and let's just keep it small and make it 12 by 16. Okay, so that's everything we got. We've got the name, Frank. How many planes? One. Sometimes this is called the plane count. We have one. Um, the type of data is char, character, and then it's 12 by 16. Those are the things you need to know for a JIT matrix. And now we need to look at it somehow. So let's type another new object and um, just start typing in P window and it'll just come right up. JIT P window. Okay. The JIT P window, um, it's sort of like a JIT window, but you can see it inside the patcher, which is handier, and you can resize it as you wish. Now, this will have 12 pixels, excuse me, 12 pixels by 16 pixels, no matter what you do to it. Um, you can resize it all you want, but it'll be 12 pixels by 16 pixels. So there we go. Okay. And to just get started here, let's send our matrix here a command to change all the pixel covers. So we'll make a message by typing M and then set all and a string, that's a dollar sign, one. So that's going to set all the pixels to whatever string one happens to be. And in order to get string one to happen to be something, we're going to type N and type slider. And that's what we want right there. And We'll just run bottom of this out to here. But we have to do one more thing, and I know I have to zoom out to do this, which is we um, need to get the ins need to get the inspector over here. Why? Oh, because I'm not. There we go. Hello, inspector. And these are always made to have um, for MIDI, so they have 128. Um, a range of 128 and we want to change that to 255 okay because that's what we can use for colors all right zooming back out now this is uh, from 0 to 255 let's lock our patcher and see what happens this should be highly reminiscent of our last video where we played a movie and couldn't see what happens because as we all know whoops unlocking our patcher again 
I'm just going to move this over. The JIT matrix isn't going to put out anything until we bang on it. So let's type in an N and type Metro 100. We don't want to go too fast here. And then type T to get a toggle. And then uh, right. I'll just run that right in the top of the JIT matrix and move these things over a little bit so we don't have to have them right on top of us. And let's turn it on. Fantastic. Do you, you probably noticed this grayed out. It, so anything that we set this to, the number will come out here. It'll go into the JIT, JIT matrix, set all the pixels to that color, and then metronome will bang it within one tenth of a second. So if we slide this up, we can get quite close to white, slide it down, we can get black. Fantastic. And now it's not receiving anything. Um, how could we change the pixels one by one? Um, since we have our metronome running here, let's, uh, let's uh, do that crazy thing that we've done in the past, which is we'll um, unlock our patcher and we'll type the letter N and create a counter. And our counter, um, we don't have to tell it, it'll count upward, and we'll have it count from 0 to 12. Okay, because we have uh, 12 pixels. And then um, let's type some, get this thing to go here. And that'll be one number. And um, this output is the carry count. I'll just show you. It makes it so much easier. Um, so when we start the metronome, this will tell us how many times it's counted up to 12. OK, so there it goes up to 12. And now this is 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So this will give us two numbers, which could be counting across this going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do I have that backwards? I probably do. Um, no, I don't. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then it'll go down 16 lines, and then we want it to start over. So in order to get this to go back to 0, um, I like to use this handy tool, which I know I've mentioned in past videos, but that was a long time ago, the modulo and that is a percent sign and then all you have to do is tell it what maximum number you want it to stop at and for us that'll be 16 because we're gonna run out of space at 16 and then we'll uh, I'll just make another number box so you can see it at work there we go so now it'll count up and this will always divide by 16 as many times as it can and give you the remainder. And so when it gets up to 16, uh, it should go back to 0 because there won't be any more remainder. And so it did. Great. Um, now, uh, a second, let me turn this off because it, it makes me nervous to have it just running like that. Um, oops. Uh, while I'm not uh, actually doing anything. I mean, while I am doing something, not doing something, doing something. Um, okay, so I'm just going to make myself a little bit more space here. Okay, so what we need to do is we want to tell this thing to set a cell to a certain color. And in order to be able to decide what color, oh, well, we could, uh, of course, uh, we'll take this apart in a minute. Okay, here we go. So we want to be able to send it a message. I'm just going to make a new message because uh, uh, that's too confusing. So here's our message, and it's set cell. You can see it'll pop right up. 
set cell, and we're going to want it. Um, we have to give it an x and a y, so our x will be. Um, bear with me for a second here. It's going. We have to do this backwards because we want it to tell it the value, which will be string one, last. So I'll say string two. You'll see why I do this in a second. Then string three, and then um, value string one. Maybe I could do this backwards. I'm not sure. And we'll connect that there. And then we will um, we'll need to pack the message into there. So we need a new object called pack. Oops, pack. Spell it correctly. Zero space zero space zero. And all of this is kind of working backwards towards using my favorite tool, the Bondo object. So a new object, Bondo3. Will give us three inlets. Oh, hey, uh, let's do one little tiny thing here. Bondo3 tells you that you have three inlets and outlets, but let's give it a 20 millisecond delay so that it doesn't go crazy. Um, the second number you put in Bondo is how long it'll just kind of sit around and wait and make sure everything's groovy before it um, starts changing things. Okay, and we connect them all together, and we connect our um, Y, our, our very our place variable y and this is x and then we need the value which we are going to use uh, this slide for so I'll just delete this and move this oh heck why not, why not just duplicate it since we have one uh, since we can do that just hold down the option key and move it over and we could even resize it so that it actually fits in there. There we go. Nice. Sort of. Now I have to move everything over. So, not neat. I'll try again. Moving stuff over. There we go. Okay, and we connect this to this, and this to this, and there. So, is it all working now? Uh, let's lock it down and just see. So, um, we'll just zoom in here and figure out why it's doing what it's doing. So, here it is. Each one of these blocks that it fills in is a pixel in its own mind. And uh, now they're, it's still filling them in, but they're all black. So let's uh, change the color to something else, like white. Oops, <laughs> wrong slider. There, changed them all to white, but there it is filling it in now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14. Whoops, I counted wrong. I should have seen this number up here. So that tells you what row it's filling in. Fantastic. Now we can have it actually fill in a different color. There it goes. And if you were to wiggle this around, you can see the separate pixels even as it goes. And it just goes over and over there. So that's one way to start filling in a matrix and to sort of get an understanding of what this matrix is doing. I left this still, so now it's just filling in gray. Um, hey, we can we can fix that, right? We can um, make an make another counter that will uh, here uh, unlock your patcher. Type new. Type counter then type a 2 so it counts up and then down from 0 to 255 
and the output is going to go right to this thing. Yes. Just for a finishing touch, we don't want to just leave things hanging, right? So there we go. So now we have our automatic changing uh, picture going on here. And uh, very exciting. It gets lighter with each successive thing. Uh, apparently not enough that you can tell um, one block from the next. I can see a, just a very tiny shade change between them, but not too much. Very nice. Well, there you go. That's working with the JIT matrix Frank. Thank you, Frank. And some counters today to understand what it is that a JIT matrix does. And what it does is to store a grid of information. A uh, patcher window is a way of displaying that information as color, but it's still information. These are just numbers. That's storing the number God only knows what 189, 190, 200, 201, 202, etc., etc. And that's what it's doing. So there it is. A little bit of the JIT matrix, and I will uh, patch with you again soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.